So hi, everyone. My name is Sean Simmons. I'm a product manager here at AWS. And today I'm going to talk to you about how you can use Amazon recognition face solutions to help build identity verification products. And so to start, I first want to touch on what Amazon recognition is, and it's essentially a series of pre-trained computer vision AI models that customers can leverage when they don't have the in-house expertise or the massive amounts of data or the time that's needed to actually train these models themselves. And so these customers who wanna perform different tasks around content moderation or object detection or face analysis can use the recognition pre-trained models by uh, calling a series of APIs. Um, they can then have the recognition pre-trained models analyze different media, whether it's video or images, and get a response back that can be incorporated into their workflow. So as an example, you know, if a photo sharing company wants to make sure that user generated content is safe before posting it, that application uh, can take an image that was uploaded by a user and send that image to recognition's content moderation APIs. And then the model will send back a response on whether or not there was um, detected harmful or offensive content in that image. And then the application can decide whether or not it wants to proceed with the post, whether or not it wants to send it for human review, or whether or not it wants to block it. And these API interactions are all sub-second to support real-time workflows. So that's one of the common use cases we see with recognition. Another common use case we see is identity verification. Identity verification is really the process where end users are able to prove they are who they say they are. And it's important for consumers who want to you know, prove identity when enrolling in new services, especially online. Um, it's important for institutions to have these mechanisms implemented so that they can ensure bad actors aren't able to steal other consumers' identities. And it's important for the institutions to have identity verification to ensure they're preventing fraud, which can lead to financial loss. And so it's a, it's a very horizontal use case. We see customers across finance and retail and healthcare and gig economy and, and travel and more. And, and today, uh, customers that are leveraging recognition for identity verification really fall into two different categories. Um, you know, one is identity verification solution providers, and these are end to end applications that provide identity verification workflows to their end customers who happen to be end businesses, right? They could be banks or medical facilities or retailers. And these solution providers have several steps in that identity verification workflow process. And for some of those steps, they're leveraging recognition face solutions on the back end, And so that's one type of customer we see. Other types of customers we see are the actual end businesses. So for example, if a bank wants to implement their own identity verification solution, they can leverage recognition for that. And so in either case, uh, these customers can use recognition face solutions in a number of the different steps that are used in identity verification. Uh, if we're using this as an example for onboarding, right? A new user is coming to create an account and they wanna enroll online for a new bank account. And so when the user is signing up, a few things have to happen, right? One, the bank wants to ensure that it's actually a live person. And so they can leverage recognition, liveness detection to ensure that it's a live person and not in fact a deep fake or a spoof attack. Another step that we commonly see used is when the bank asks a user to upload a government issued ID to enroll in a new account, that bank can use our APIs via Analyze ID or Detect Text to extract relevant information for the actual signup flow, be it the name, address, age, and so on. Another step we see is leveraging our face analysis APIs, which are called Detect Faces, to do an analysis of an image of a face that's captured for that new user. And that can help ensure that it's a high quality representation of the face that will help in the downstream face matching that I'll touch on in, in just a minute here. And so you can do a sharpness and, and brightness check on the image 
you can make sure that it's a front facing pose of the face and that the face isn't being blocked or anything like that. Also, you can, uh, with our detect face API, you can get an age prediction value if an age check is being incorporated into this particular workflow. The next step that we often see identity verification providers implementing is a one-to-one -one face match comparison, and that's called our compare face API. And in this scenario, the bank can take a frame from the liveness video that was captured, and it can take the photo of the person from their uploaded ID, and it can send those two images to recognition compare faces, which will send back a confidence score on whether or not those two faces match. So that's our one-to-one -one face match solution. We also have a different flavor of face matching, which is called one-to-many or face search. And in this scenario, um, a bank can actually take uh, an image of a new enrolling user and search against other face representations of you know, previously enrolled accounts, or if the bank has previously flagged any fraudulent users, the bank can search against that as well to make sure that this new account is in already a duplicate account holder or a previously uh, flagged fraudulent user. And so those are several steps uh, in the onboarding process. You can also leverage recognitions, uh, different solutions in ongoing authentication or step up authentication. And so an example of that is if, you know, a existing user wants to do a high value transaction, that bank may want to do another liveness check to make sure one, you know, it is an actual live person trying to initiate this. And number two, they would do another face match to make sure that it is in fact Sean who's trying to do this high value transaction. And so those are the different places where recognition can help from a high level. Now let's double click on some of the more important uh, aspects of those solutions. So Amazon Recognition Face Liveness uh, has a client side SDK that can be implemented in customers and application and used to capture a short five second video of an enrolling user or an authenticating user. After that, recognition will do an uh, analysis on the video and send back a confidence score via zero to 100 on the likelihood that the video is of a live person or if it's of an attack, you know, and recognition liveness supports multiple types of attacks, be it presentation attacks where someone is holding up a printed photo or a digital image or injection attacks of deep fakes or virtual cameras or things along those lines. And so we can see here uh, in the, the video that's playing off to the right, an example of someone who will be holding up an image of someone for the liveness check. And you may not be able to see it because the text is small here, but you'll notice that the text that comes back in the response in the demo video is highlighted in red. And that's because when this person holds up an image, it will fail the actual liveness check. And so this is an example of being able to detect a presentation attack. You'll see there that it's a very low score. And so the user would be blocked at this step. We also want to share an example of how authentic and genuine users are able to uh, get through the check. And so here I'll again demo myself going through the process. And so here you see we get a high score returned indicating that it is in fact a live user and they can proceed to the next step. And so this is an example of how our liveness detection works. The demo UI that we just shared there is completely customizable so you can make sure you can plug it in to your existing application and it meets your UI standards and, um, you know, and branding standards. So the next step that we wanna talk about is face analysis. So here you can send an image of a face to recognitions, detect face APIs, and it can send back a, a series of different metadata detected about that face. And so we talked about age prediction. If you need to do an age check as part of your process, we send a brightness and sharpness score, which is specific to the actual face that's captured in the image to make sure it's high quality before you proceed to the next step of face matching. Um, we have values around face occlusion, which can tell you 
if there's a hand in front of the face or a cell phone blocking the face or a mask blocking the face, in which case you may want to prompt the user for a new capture. Um, and then also different pose values. So we can tell you the actual yaw pitch and roll of the head pose in relation to the camera. And we can give you the pitch and the yaw values indicating where the eye direction is looking in relation to the camera. And so before covering our, our face matching uh, solutions, you know, often when we're talking to existing customers or new customers, proving that a face matching solution is not only accurate, but is also fair, is critical for identity and verification workflows. So making sure that the workflows work well across all end users. And so along those lines, we recently had a third party service called Credo AI, who is a responsible AI company, do an evaluation of our latest version six face matching APIs across six demographic groups that were defined by skin tone and gender. And so that evaluation showed that across all six groups, there was a maximum error rate of five and 10 million for false matches and a maximum error rate of five and 10,000 for false non-matches, which is industry leading. And so this value is actually shared on our uh, public website today for our recognition face matching service card. And we can share a link in the, uh, in the presentation here as well. And so again, for face matching, we have two different types that we offer customers. One is the one-to-one -one or compare faces API. And what happens here is again, in the example where you're sending a uh, frame from the liveness video and a capture of a face from a ID doc, you can send those to recognition. What's actually happening is recognition will extract a representation of the face called a face vector, which is a mathematical representation of the face. And then the model will actually do a comparison between the two different face vectors that are extracted from those images. And after that, a confidence score is sent back indicating whether or not uh, the confidence that those two faces match. And so this is a sub second operation to enable real time workflows for our customers. And because it's a one to one face matching solution, the face factor, the face vectors are not actually persisted for customers. The next type of solution we have for face matching is one to many search. And so in this particular scenario, application providers can persist face vectors in what's called collections that they can search against at a later time. And so how this works is, again, you can send an image of a face to our recognition APIs, um, the ones that are dedicated to storing that face. And in that scenario, what happens is we take the image, we extract a face vector, and the face vector itself is what's stored in the actual collection, not the image. And so you can build these collections to support up to 20 million face vectors. If you have more users than that, you can build multiple collections and search them in parallel. And uh, further, if you have multiple face vectors of the same person, you can actually aggregate those into something we call a user vector, which will significantly improve accuracy for uh, true matches and, and true non-matches. And so later, going back to our previous example, when you want to search against those collections, so our example was a new user is enrolling uh, for an online bank account, and you want to search to make sure, number one, you know that user doesn't already have an existing bank account, number two, it wasn't a previously flagged fraudulent user. You call the APIs with the image of that user, a face vector is extracted, and then that face vector is searched against the up to 20 million face vectors that can exist in that collection. And so again, this is a, a sub-second API response uh, to ensure that we're meeting real-time use cases. And it's important to note that collections are controlled and maintained by our customers. And so what that means is if you have an AWS account one, two, three, four, and you create the collection, only AWS account one, two, three, four can store face vectors in that collection. And only AWS account one, two, three, four is able to search face vectors in that collection and delete face vectors from that collection or even delete the entire collection. And so this was just a quick snapshot of the, the different steps in identity verification workflows where recognition can help for a more uh, deep dive. On these topics, please visit our website that's posted here, 
Additionally, if you have any questions about Amazon recognition for identity verification or recognition in general, uh, please feel free to use the email alias that's posted on the screen as well. Thanks very much for the time.